Hey ladies, good afternoon. Hey, Juliana. <laughs> awesome, thank you for um, popping in for our 3 p.m. session. Juliana, can you see my screen, the PowerPoint? Okay, awesome, and can you hear me pretty well? Perfect, all right. All right, we have Sarah. She looks like she's getting logged into the audio, which is great. We'll give her a few minutes to do that or a few seconds to do that. All right, so Juliana, I'm gonna move to the next slide so you can see the supplies if you want to um, participate in the activity with us today. Um, you're going to need a paper cup. It can be 16 ounces, but it doesn't have to be. It also doesn't have to be a paper cup. If you wanna use glass or plastic, that's fine. Um, please have a coffee filter. You really only need one, but if you have more than one, not a problem. Um, you're also going to need a black marker, pencil, tape. Um, if you have rubbing alcohol, great. If not, then peroxide will work. Um, you're also going to need a little bit of water and a ruler. So that's today's materials for our supplies today. I think Sarah is all connected to audio. Um, Sarah, I know we can't see you, but if you want to turn your video on, that's great. If not, um, you can use our chat box or use the thumbs up emojis. Um, if you have any questions, you can say those aloud. You will have to unmute yourself or you can put that in the chat. And we have Miss Rebecca joining us today too. And she will be able to monitor our unmute and mute buttons in our chat as well. All right. So ladies, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, I think you all are familiar with me. I've seen you ladies before, um, but my name is Lindsay Roberson. I'm one of the program managers with Girl Scouts of South Carolina, Mountains to Midlands, here in the Columbia area. Excited for you all to be on today. Um, this session is our cadet session on forensic chemistry. So we'll go ahead and get started. So today's session is a part of the special agent badge, and that is a badge earned by cadets. And it does have five steps, but we're gonna focus on step three today, which is try the science. Um, since, our, since our project or activity takes a little bit of time to have a reaction, we're gonna start with that first, and then we'll get into all um, the learnings after that, okay? And let's move forward. As always, we're going to start with our promise, Girl Scout Promise in Law. Um, Juliana or Sarah, do either of you want to lead us in our promise or law in law? Okay, Juliana, if you want to unmute yourself and you can get us started. On my honor, I will try to serve God and my country to help people at all times and to live by the Girl Scout law. I will do my best to be honest and fair, friendly and helpful, considerate and caring, courageous and strong, and responsible for what I say and do, and to respect myself and others, respect authority, use resources wisely, make the world a better place and be a sister to every Girl Scout. Awesome, thank you so much for being brave and volunteering for us. I appreciate it. So the purpose of today's badge, um, when you've learned this badge, you'll know secrets from the world of forensic science and criminal psychology. Does any, do any of you have an interest in working in forensics at all? Just by show of hands? Not Juliana, okay. Maybe Sarah? And there's an emoji up there too, if you wanna do a thumbs up or if you wanna put in the chat. Okay, that's okay. <laughs> that's okay, we will move forward, move forward. Let's see. All right, so let's start with our activity first. So we are gonna be creating coffee filter chromatography. And again, here are your materials. 
And if you do not have all your materials with you right now, there's no problem. Um, our session will be posted on our website soon. So you can always go back and follow along. Um, but you are going to need a paper cup or it can be glass or plastic, not a problem. You also are going to need a coffee filter, a black marker, pencil, tape, rubbing alcohol or um, peroxide, water, and a ruler. So I will stop sharing my screen and I'm going to spotlight our supplies so you can see that. Let's see. All right, so everyone should see the supplies here. All right, so we'll go ahead and get started and I will move this out the way so you can see. So I didn't have a paper cup, but I did have a glass jar. So I'm actually gonna use that today. All right, so the first thing that you do have to do is cut your coffee filter into strips. So we'll start with that first. And you don't have to have the round coffee filters. You could have any size because we are gonna have to cut them. And I don't wanna distract you, so I'm gonna turn my video off so you can look at the supplies. All right. So I'm going to cut one strip since I'm only going to do one example. So that's just my strip of my coffee filter. So I have that. Move the rest to the side. All right. So next, what we want to do is grab our ruler. And our pencil because we do want to create a line at the bottom of our coffee filter and so we're going to do that about at one fourth inch from the bottom of the coffee filter strip so i'll grab my ruler and oh actually i'll turn it this way <laughs> There we go. And so at about a fourth of an inch, it's gonna be about right here. So I'm gonna grab my pencil and draw just a line at the bottom there. All right. So once I have my line at the bottom, I'm gonna take my black marker and just create a dot in the middle right under that line. All right, here is my dot. Doesn't have to be that big, it can be small. So now I'm ready to mix my water and my peroxide, or if you have alcohol, it's gonna be water and alcohol mixture. So next, we're going to take equal portions of water and rubbing alcohol, put enough in the mixture uh, of the mixture in the cup so that it coats the bottom, okay? So I just have a little bit of, of water here. And I'm only going to pour enough to coat the bottom, about a fourth of an inch. So that's almost, I'll put a little, there we go. That's perfect. Okay. And so next, I'm going to take my peroxide or alcohol if you have that. And I'll do about equal parts. So I'll pour that in, pour, pour, pour. That should be good. All right. So now we have our solution. I'm just going to stir it around just a little bit there. Awesome. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to take our pencil and our tape, a little piece here. You may need more than one piece, just depends. So my extra, I'm just going to stick to the side of my table just in case I need that. 
All right. So we're going to hold the pencil horizontally and take the top of the coffee filter strip to the pencil. So what I want to do is I'm going to take my strip here. And I know this is a lot longer than my cup. So I'm going to wrap it around a little bit. Just so it's the length of the cup. So the most important part is to make sure that your strip is the length of the cup here because you do not want it to fully submerge for this project, okay? All right. All right, so my filter is taped, all ready to go. And so now we're gonna position the pencil horizontally across the top of the paper cup so that the strip hangs into the liquid. So when this hangs in the liquid, you do not want to fully cover this dot. So you're only covering just that edge there. So let's go ahead and drop. Now, if you notice that when you drop it in, that the dot is gonna be submerged, um, you can, of course, roll up the filter just a little bit with your tape. So I'm gonna pull it back so I can see. Perfect. So now we'll let that sit for the remainder of our session today. But once we talk about all of our learnings, we're gonna come back and just see how that looks. Look at that reaction, okay? All right, thank you ladies for watching that. And I'll turn that spotlight off. All right. Awesome. So let's go back to our PowerPoint and we will move forward. So I wanna talk a little bit about forensic science. Do any of you ladies know what that means? What is forensic science? Any guesses? And I'll check the chat just to see. No guesses, okay. No problem. So forensic science, um, it's also known as criminalistics, um, but it means to analyze physical crime evidence, okay? So I saw that Ms. Rebecca already put in the chat, which is great because this is one of my questions. <laughs> but um, if you haven't answered the question already, what is your favorite forensic TV show? Does anybody want to say it out loud or put in the chat? And I'll go back just to see if any ladies put that in here. And I see something from Sarah. It looks like she's making a detective movie in foreign languages out of Legos. That's cool. Awesome. So Ms. Rebecca says NCIS is really cool. Yes, I'm currently watching Criminal Minds. I can't believe I've gone this long without seeing Criminal Minds. <laughs> but uh, it is really, really good. Anybody else? Juliana, Sarah? Don't know? Okay, that's not a problem. So Sarah says, I know of a character named Batgirl and she uses forensic show in brain drain. Oh, cool. Okay, I didn't know that. Cool, awesome, awesome. So before we go to our second question, or actually, no, we can move to our second question. Um, what evidence do forensic scientists look for? Who can tell me that? Either Sarah or Jillianna. What are the different things that forensic scientists look for? Yes, Juliana, you can unmute yourself. Go ahead. What did you say? That might be the things that were left. 
you said items that may have been left behind? Mm -hmm. Okay, yes, that's one of them. Okay, anything else? Um, Sarah says clues or fingerprints or footprints. Exactly, that's three other good ones. Good. Anything else? All right. So you ladies definitely pulled um, some of the clues that I had on my list. So of course, fingerprints is probably number one. Um, they also look for any other DNA um, that might be at the scene. They look for objects, so shoes, clothing. Um, they also even talk to eyewitnesses. That can go into evidence to see what others may have saw. Um, footprints and tracks. Um, so you may see that someone might have been wearing a specific type of shoe, or there might have been someone that was in a car or on a bike. And so those are different things that they look for, just different tracks that might be um, in the ground near the crime scene. So those are just different things that forensic scientists look for. So great job, ladies. So I want to talk a little bit about types of forensic scientists. So the first one we're going to talk about is criminalists. Um, criminalists um, pretty much look for physical evidence from a crime, anything that will be considered physical evidence. Um, next, you have digital and multimedia forensic scientists. What they look for, actually, I won't tell you. I want you to tell me what you think they look for. Digital and multimedia forensic scientists, what do you think they look for? I'm just looking in the chat to see if there's any answers there. But who can tell me what do you think that they look for? Digital and multimedia forensic scientists. And I think, Jillian, I think you sent something in. Oh, file, criminals files of information. Okay. Okay. And they also look for things like the items that might be on their computer or maybe their camera or their phone. So they're looking for different digital evidence um, of, the, of the victim, anything that can help them out digitally. So good job. So next you have engineering. So these are the individuals that um, will use a lot of math and science um, to find out what happened at a crime scene. So really that's in all of um, forensic scientists duties. They're definitely using math and science. Then you have forensic dentists. Um, and those are the individuals that will do more examinations of teeth of a victim just to figure out um, if they can identify that person or if there was anything that may have happened that can lead to solving the case. Um, then you have forensic pathologists. Um, and they do examine the bodies and then they analyze the blood from those bodies. You also have forensic anthropologists. Um, those are going to be the scientists that will identify um, a body. And then you have toxicologists. Um, they are looking for the effects of harmful substances. So if, there's, um, if there was a death caused by any type of poison um, or natural causes, they're the individuals that will be able um, to give you information on that. So as you can see, there's a plethora of jobs that you can choose from in the field of forensics. Um, this is a very interesting field. Um, if, if there's a show that you've always been wanting to look at, I encourage you to look at that as long as you are allowed to, um, just to kind of get an idea of what the forensic scientists do. Um, again, Ms. Rebecca mentioned NCIS, Criminal Minds. Those are two good um, shows that really give you an insight of really all of these different roles of forensic scientists. Awesome. So let's go back to step three. So again, we tried out the science today with our activity, which is the forensic chemistry, chromatography. Um, so the process of chromatography is used by forensic scientists so they are allowed to separate the parts of a mixture so their individual parts can be analyzed. So Juliana, you have a question. Go ahead and unmute yourself. It's not really a question. 
it's okay. A, it's a, it's like I remember something from my show that I watched. It's okay. Like, it's like they were solving a mystery in this episode. Mm -hmm. uh, the host of the show's brother escaped from jail and it's pinned on their mother. Mm. But they're trying to figure out whether it was the mother or the girlfriend. So they did this and then they analyzed the cakes and they did what you were doing. Exactly, exactly. This is a definitely thank you for sharing that too because this is definitely what forensic scientists will use and it may seem you know really basic and really simple but it helps them solve a lot of different cases so science is a is a huge piece of forensics to help them solve cases thank you for that awesome So again, um, with this method of forensic chemistry, um, it can be used to detect poisons or drugs present in a body. Um, it can also help find traces of explosives or to identify ink and stains or ransom notes. That's crazy, right? I think that's so cool. So, so cool. All right, I'm going to share my supply screen with you again. So let's go back. We're going to spotlight that video. So let's see. So remember, we started out with just a simple black dot um, and we submerged that into our peroxide and water. And so you can see some of that color moved up. It's very faint. So I'll put that up to the camera. So as you can see, that black dot started right there but then it started to separate its colors and move up. So right now we're seeing a little bit of blue that came out of that black that's right there. And that one dot all the way at the bottom. So that solution helped break up the mixture that's in a black marker. Um, and again, forensic scientists will, will use this so they can find traces of important evidence that they can use in their cases. So again, if you are not able to do that particular activity, I encourage you to do it. It's very, very cool. If you want to add more than just a black dot, um, I do encourage you to add a couple of different dots. Um, the best colors to use are brown and black um, because there's a lot of different colors that's mixed together to make, those, to make that one color. So I encourage you to do that. Um, again, this is a part of your special agent badge for cadets. So the activity is in the book and it should be on page six. So you can definitely check that out. And I'm going to reshare my PowerPoint with you. All right. So next steps for your badge, um, you're going to want to go back to step one which is investigate investigation. A lot of great steps to do or different activities you can do with that. Um, step two is reveal reality. Step three, we just did step three today, which is try the science. But if you want to try the other um, activities that are in the book, please do so. They're really fun and cool. Step four is key in to body language. So when you're watching those shows, as Juliana mentioned the show, so did Sarah in the chat box, um, go back and look at those shows and look at the body language of each individual throughout the scenes and see what you can tell. And then step five is practice the art of detection. So that is gonna challenge you to be a true detective, okay? All right, are there any questions from today's session? All right, I saw that Juliana said that she's done with the batch. This was probably the last step she had to do. Awesome. Well, I don't see any questions, but I really thank you all for joining us today. You girls were great. Thank you for answering those questions and follow along with the activity today um, with forensic science. Don't forget next Thursday is another cadet session and we're gonna be talking about budgeting. 
So make sure you come with your materials that you might need. Check out the website to see what materials that we're asking you to bring. Also remember that every Tuesday at five o'clock is our girls only lounge. So join us next week. We're gonna be making wallets out of duct tape. So make sure you also visit the website to get all the supplies that you're going to need for that session. And I'm gonna check the chat box one more time just to make sure I didn't miss anything. Uh, I see Sarah is giving us, oh, from Brain Drain. I'm going to have to find that. I've never heard of that before. Awesome. Also, girls, if you haven't purchased your uh, patch already, we still have the Girl Scouts Connected Virtual Program Series patch. Um, you can purchase those through our Girls Gear store. Um, and there is still curbside service available if you wish to pick that up. But if neither of you ladies have any more questions, I will let you go to enjoy the rest of your Thursday. And we hope that you have a wonderful 4th of July weekend. And thank you, Rebecca, for joining me today, too. Awesome, ladies. I'll let you go. Y'all have a wonderful day. And we will talk next week. Thank you.